about this, but I want to refer to some, some, some concept, method, and I all the time thinking about action, in fact. No? So the, we will go, first I will start with this idea of uh, multidimensional poverty and the recent experience in Latin America, referring to some conceptual issues that are reflected in some very small and technical thing. But when you use the technical thing, you will see how political they are. And I'm glad that some of the people talk about the political. Well, someone said that poverty is depoliticized. I think that these things are very political, no? Uh, and from there, I want to bring the idea of equity, because I think that we need to bring together poverty and equity. In all, it's, we will work together on both things. Uh, I want to say something about the conceptual framework that I'm working. I want to introduce the organization that I'm running at the new school, that is Equity for Children, and two programs, something that we are doing, very interesting thing with CROP, that I am happy of being a member of CROP, and uh, a research on what is equity and equality, because it's, now it's in the agenda. But we say, what the different international organization, the foundation, the research, what they think about what is <coughs> equality, what is equity, and how to translate to uh, policies. But uh, let me say that there's one message that I want to bring along the presentation, because after 20 minutes, you don't remember what I'm trying to say. So there's one, only one thing that I want to say. That is, I think that we need to and this is based on my experience and what we are doing in Equity for Children, I think that we need to work on setting up goals and action on multidimensional poverty and equity in a simultaneous way. We cannot work in one or the other. We need to work on both together, and I will call you to bring, give visibility in this to children and adolescents because they are a big part and a big part of the solution at the same time. So let's go to the presentation, yeah? Because uh, it's two minutes, 34 seconds. Uh, I think that uh, basically this question of uh, multidimensional child poverty is very political. I'm very struck about two things, and let me say a very brief story. Like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, uh, I used to work for UNICEF at that time. And uh, the World Bank came with this question of the dollar a day. The first goal of the MDGs was poverty reduction, income poverty reduction. Thomas was, at that time, if I'm not wrong, working on this uh, destroying of the construction of the dollar a day with Sanjay Reddy. Uh, and we are trying to bring this idea of child poverty is, uh, is more than poverty average. And we don't have any number. In fact, we don't have any number. We build something. And I went to a meeting and was uh, Peter Townsend, and I don't know if you know, he died two years ago. And uh, uh, he was uh, on this relative poverty and has a debate with Amartya Sen about that. And he was in the meeting and I challenged him to discuss and bring child poverty in a different way of uh, uh, income poverty. And we worked on what was the first global estimation of multidimensional child poverty. So in my recent work in Latin America and, uh, and Middle East and uh, East Asia, I was struck at how many countries are now working on this multidimensional poverty. But at the same time, I was struck at how political it is, because at the end, you have a number. You say, this is a percentage of the private children, yeah? So here there are 
four things, three, three, three conceptual things that are reflected on methodological things that I want to talk very briefly. One, people use the right approach and the capability approach as similar or the same thing. I, I think that we need to reflect about that. Yeah? The second, when you define what is here, that is dimension, indicator, and threshold, in some way, you are talking about what Juliana was talking about, social protection floor, and what is the minimum. And we need to think, from a theoretical point of view, if we are talking about this idea of social minimum of role, or we are continue the line of minimum of uh, basic need, that is another kind of approach. And the different result when you go to defining the dimension indicator and threshold. I will show you some exa concrete example of this, but this is the idea. And I think that it's important to have this in mind and to take a definition, conceptual definition, in order to go to the methodological phase. And finally, we need to think if we are trying to measure and conceptualize on poverty or well-being and social structure. And the thing that I want to work to show you is uh, related with dimension, what we use if the union or intersection of the dimension and threshold, and what is called the poverty cutoff, that is how many deprivation you need to have in order to be considered poor. Yeah? So let me give you only some, this is only example. Education, anyone agree that being deprived of education, a kid that is not going to basic school or to school, is deprived, no? And is, is a poor, and the household is poor. There is some other discussion about family, household. So, what is the social minimum? Is basic education? This is El Salvador, yeah? Because we need to think in the context. It's not the same in middle-income country that a very poor country that. So, if we use basic education, seven to 15 years old, and the deprivation is not going to school, you have 6% of, of kids, yeah? If you use, use preschool and basic education, you have 20%, and if you use preschool and secondary, you have 70 So, how you decide that? You want to reduce the number of, of poor? Well, go to the first one. I think that we need to have a concept on this. The legal, what is the legal standard for the country? Yeah? What is the legal obligation? And what the, in this case, what is the convention of the right of the child said that is unclear in this case, let me say. So, first case, how you define the thresholds and the dimensions. Second case, it's very simple. You use the union or the intersection of the uh, of the indicator. This is a, one of the other very usual, I'm using very the examples that everyone is using this kind of thing. So, the condition of the floor, the roof, and the wall. Yeah? In the chart, you have 51% of the household has no problems, let's say, in that condition, extreme, extreme condition. In yellow is the one that is not correlated with the other, and the other are correlation. So, if you use the union, that is to say you are poor in any of the conditions, you have 49% of children living in, with some kind of deprivation. If you use an intersection of two, at least two, you have 18 children, and the three, you have four persons. But the point is that the total impact, in one case, you will say that you have 73% of children deprived, 
And in the other case, you will say that we have 63% of the chip. It's worse in the case of dementia, for example, income poverty and deprivation, multidimensional deprivation. You use the union of the two or the intersection of the two. And the differences are extreme. And there is a case, one country, that is using the, the intersection. So the reduction of poverty there is very important. So let me show this. Uh, can you see? Who knows? No. <laughs> but, uh, well, what we have here is the number of deprivations. Yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six deprivations. Yeah? So, because you have, you can be deprived in education, you can be deprived in household, you can be deprived in immunization. Yeah? This is the, the number of deprivations here. And here is the percentage of children deprived. In one case, I, we are using the union in household, 73% is the total, in the other case is the is 63. So there is one of the methodology that use what is called the cut-off of poverty. To be poor, you need to have two, three, or four deprivations. Yeah? So how how you decide that kind of thing? Maybe one possibility is to look and say, well, you know what? I would like to have around 25% of kids in my country, not more, not much more than that. Or maybe, well, 25 is too low. Let's go to 41. So 41 is two deprivations. So you two deprivations in intersection in the household. That's what I have. So I don't want to, we cannot elaborate more on this, but my only point here is that this is very political. So we need to be very conceptual by the other side in order to take political and technical decisions. Uh, let me finish with this. Uh, in Latin America, there is uh, one study for Latin America that was uh, done by ECLAC at UNICEF. Uh, using the capability approach with K is the cutoff of poverty more than one. Some of the countries are using two. Deprivation, some countries are using three. It's the case of Chile, Colombia, and Mexico. Mexico is using also the intersection between income and deprivation. And also there is a move in order to measure well-being in, uh, in that kind of uh, context. Okay? So let me continue because I want to bring another thing that I think that is very important more on what we are doing is what children think about poverty. Because the deprivation approach and what we are doing an income approach is material, the material poverty in some way. And there's many other things that are really important for children, that is the self-esteem and how they feel of being poor. So um, I think that these three interrelating domains that we would put in our conceptual approach to poverty, to multidimensional poverty. One is the deprivation approach that I was talking about, that is also income. But the other big one, and I, you were talking about that, is exclusion, no? A big bunch of situations are related with exclusion. And the other is vulnerability. What is the networks that the society going fast. Okay, so let's go to the other part, because it's five minutes, she said. Well, <laughs> I will not do it five minutes. <laughs> so let me go to um, the question of equity, because that's the other, the other side of the thing. I think that we need to go to equity and uh, poverty at the same time. And uh, there are 
two things that are important, but we can call vertical inequities and horizontal inequities, or what Charles Steele is uh, used to, to call durable inequalities. Um, we cannot work, if someone said, well, where should I prioritize? Many people will say, well, here in the red. That depends on the country, that depends on the situation, that depends on the political situation, and maybe you need to work here, or at least in this horizontal way of working, if not, and we had the, ex the example today, no? So these are overlapping categories that we need to consider. Let me introduce equity for children. If not, I will finish, I will not introduce the, the organization that I'm running. <laughs> She's looking at me that, go fast, go fast. <laughs> I, I always say to my students, if you have not too much time, the idea is not to go very fast. So you say the same, but in half of the time, because it's not very useful, but I'm doing it. So the idea of equity for children, in fact, um, we were thinking that we need to bring this, all what I am discussing, in one context. And we work on child rights, child poverty, and equity, and equality, but related with public policy. Public policy is the center of our thinking. And uh, we, we do events, we disseminate idea, networking, we link the, the academy with the NGO, big organizations, and uh, let me tell you only two of the, of the things that we are doing. So one is uh, something that we are doing in partnership with CROG, it's a big project about child poverty, uh, we will have, we just finished a call for paper for this uh, conference in Mexico on child poverty, democracy, and public policy. And uh, we will publish a book, and the idea is that we will do this in several regions, linking always this idea of equity and poverty. And the other research is uh, research on what is equity. Uh, doing interviews, analyzing documents. The idea is that we want people to know that if they come to Equity for Children, the most important document and interview and what people are thinking about equity and poverty is there. That's the main thing. So in the we finish the phase one and we interview top people of all these organizations and we select three of the most important documents and all there with some key question research. So let me show some, very briefly, some of the results. Uh, equity is in the agenda. Equality and equity. If you want, we can elaborate about that, not now. Uh, however, Theoretical concepts are very seldom in the picture of the, of the international uh, organization. Uh, and they're different from one to another. Something that is common that they say, well, equity is about the most marginalized people. We need to focus or do something on that group uh, and just the privation and providing equal opportunity to all. So these are three things that are common for most of the people. The difference is this a debate about opportunities and outcomes. Should we work on outcomes at the same time on opportunities or giving equal opportunities what we need to do? Um, and the other big debate, I think that the two debates is this one and the other one is how to reduce the gap. And I think that the presentation on universal things are very related with this because in the case of 
universal for all really integrating the society, we need to look, I think that we need to look at not only access, that is opportunity, but to outcomes. Um, the challenges are clear. There is not enough disaggregate data, and when there is data, people don't know how to use the data for policy. That's the real thing. Um, I think that that's maybe the, the, the most important thing. And let me finish with some nine suggestions. I, I was trying to put 10, but uh, because you need to have five or 10, that's the, the <laughs> Occidental way of thinking. Well, it's Arabic, in fact. So uh, the third thing I already said and it was at the beginning, and I think that we need to set goals and measure on multidimensional child poverty and inequities. That's the third and most important thing. The second is this question of outcome, opportunities, and results. I personally, I think that we need to work on both of them because uh, we cannot only ensure access, we need to ensure good results. I, we in this research, we saw that there is not an holistic vision of the society. So the poor are not isolated. It's part of the society. They are the middle class, they are the rich, everyone is together. So we need to have this holistic vision and uh, we need to analyze more how this link and how is this reproduction of uh, inequalities. Uh, strengths, local participatory planning and social accountability is very important. And I think that uh, intra-urban inequities is something that we don't pay enough attention. So that's why I put a, a specific suggestion and I think that the local action in that case is very, very important and we need to focus more and more on urban issues and intra-urban inequality. Participation and agency of children and adolescents, I think that is something that we need to do in any case. And finally, the, the last two are the macroeconomic environment. If we don't do as we mentioned mm -hmm. at the beginning with Mr. Paxton, that uh, I think that if we don't do something in these two, two lines, it will be very difficult to do anything in the other. So I think that in 22 minutes 46 seconds, I think. Thank you very much. <laughs>